Are you on a holy or spiritual path? How's your life going to turn out if you are? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you what it means to be on a holy path and the different life paths you might end up taking. You can be born or destined to a holy path, or you can choose to live a path of holiness, which means that your life does not belong to you your family, your clan, your church, your community, your culture, your nation, or to your career. Your life belongs to divinity or to God. That means that many people on this path will not have children and very often not be married because when you're on a holy path, you can no longer make one person or a few persons happy you're now empowered to and held accountable to make the whole world happy. In a metaphorical sense, you no longer have your own body. You're transformed and become part of a larger universal body of God. So you're either an arm, a leg, a kidney, a finger, an eye, but you're not whole, you're part of something greater than you're able to become on your own, and that's holiness. Let's talk about the different spiritual archetypes. So first, we have prophets, and prophets are revolutionaries. They come here to destroy the status quo and to upend it and to smash the structures of society that have become oppressive. They never make money or they never take money for what they do because they're forbidden to. And they must be independent agents who declare their truth. So purity is the utmost number one factor for a prophet's survival. If they become corrupt in any way, such as seeking self-glory, then they'll die. So prophets are the mind of God the mind of God is sharp like a piercing sword. This is how God thinks. So second, we have messengers. Now messengers don't care what the message is. They're kind of like the FedEx guy. They just want to get their package delivered as fast as possible. So the answer that someone has been seeking their whole life, the messenger is there to deliver it. So sometimes people will reject the messenger and messengers are very well dressed. If you see them, they're, <clears throat> if you see them, they're rather fine in their appearance. They're regal, noble, they dress expensively and they're super fast. And they know that the words that they carry are like liquid gold. So if you don't accept a messenger, that messenger will be really offended and force you to take the message. Prophets, on the other hand, are always dressed in rags and they usually live on the, in, a, in a shack on the outskirts of society. But messengers are well-groomed and they're well-paid for their task. And sometimes they have to deliver their message to dangerous places and sometimes they have dangerous messages to deliver to dangerous despots. And so messengers are well equipped to do this task. Messengers are the mouth and tongue of God. This is how God speaks. And third, we have saints. Now a visiting at scholar who's a Buddhist nun asked me what saints do and I answered her, nothing. All saints do is love. And saints are often depressed because they carry the suffering of the entire world and their only job is to love. That's it, just love. Saints are the broken heart of God and this is how God loves. Fourth, we have teachers or sages. Sages teach and they tell us how to do things right and why we're doing it wrong. And they're very patient and they'll explain everything step by step. So if you're stuck on a problem in your life, 
the sage will be very understanding and explain it to you. Whereas a messenger or a prophet has zero patience. And if you don't listen to a prophet, <clears throat> a rain of fire within three seconds will come and destroy you. <clears throat> and so you die fast. Now, if you don't listen to a messenger, you're not going to die fast. You're going to die, but you're going to die slowly. So, but a teacher will sit there and basically step you through the current life lesson and never judge you. A teacher is going to give you this ample space to experiment and make mistakes and point out what you're doing wrong so that you can become more aware. Now, a saint won't point out crap. A saint will just sit there and love you. So teachers and sages are the hands of God. This is how God does things. And fifth, we have pastors. So pastors are like mothers and fathers. They mother you, they father you, they spend their whole life in the metaphorical kitchen of the world and cook for everyone. They're there to nurture, to listen, to watch, to pray, to comfort. They're not revolutionaries like the prophets, and they're not pseudo-royalty like messengers. They're, they're kind of like politicians. Their agenda is to dole out food and nurturing and goodness for everyone. Pastors are the stomach of God. This is how God hungers and how God feeds. And six, we have warriors. So warriors fight. They're kind of like PETA, the Animal Liberation Front, the civil, right the civil right activists of the 1960s. They're like Gandhi's armies of peace or Sufi poets. And they're like a piercing ray of light into humanity's darkness. So warriors are the feet of God. This is how God walks, marches, runs. This is how God moves. And without warriors, there's no progress. So seventh, we have artists. And artists shake, wiggle, build, they architect, they sculpt, engineer, they paint, they sing, they celebrate. They represent God's imagination or how God images the world as a new creation. And artists are the butt of God. And this is how God plays. Now there's other spiritual archetypes, but these are just a few that I've observed as my time as a religious scholar. If you are on a holy path, you're not going to be gray, meaning you're not going to be a fence sitter. You're, going to, you're basically going to choose to be on a side, and you're going to be ch choose to be on the side of goodness and of light. And when you choose a side, your soul is going to attract the opposite in order for you to balance the karma of the planet. So for example, to me, Islam is a religion of peace. So it attracts conflict, such as the Middle East. Christianity is the religion of love. So it attracts hate, like what we saw in historicized racism. Buddhism is the religion of detachment. So it attracts billionaires who have a lot of material objects, such as Silicon Valley tech CEOs. God is wholeness and God is whatever makes you whole when you're half or broken. So when you're on a spiritual path, you tend to choose the religion which completes your incomplete soul. And I love reading your comments. So please comment on this video and thank you so much for your time for watching.